Fed Chair Jay Powell's comments today set for intense scrutiny after the collapse of SVB and the fear it created over contagion to the wider financial system. That's not even bringing in Credit Suisse and UBS, et cetera, to the whole situation. Let's sort of take a step back and look at what's gotten us here. Joining us now is David Gura, NPR Business Desk correspondent. David, formerly an anchor at MSNBC and a correspondent for Bloomberg Television and Radio, which is where I got to know him, former colleague of mine. Dave, good to see you. So uh, in your reporting, as this is all unfolded, sort of how are you thinking about it as we are now at a point where there's some relative calm? I mean, it's been a wild ride just because so much of this has been sentiment driven, as you know, Julie. And I think that that's kind of like we're, we're at this point now where you say this is the backdrop to what's happening at this meeting and a backdrop I think that the Fed chair is going to feel duty bound to address and talk about. But we're at this point now where you've got policymakers and lawmakers uh, with this dual impulse to look back and conduct this postmortem of what happened. I think that's certainly happening at the Federal Reserve and on Capitol Hill as well, certainly happening among other bankers. Uh, and then this effort to sort of move forward to look ahead to what might happen. And uh, you had the Treasury Secretary yesterday coming out in that speech before the American Bankers Association talking about uh, how the government stands ready, basically, to intervene if this were similar circumstances were to befall other smaller banks. So, um, yeah, this impulse to look forward and look back. And in the moment here, I think we are at a point where uh, I don't know if cooler heads are prevailing, but folks are exhaling uh, after what's been a pretty wild, bumpy ride here over the last, what, 10, 11 days. David, what do you think the biggest lesson learned, perhaps, that banks are going to be able to take away from the turmoil that's ensued here? I mean, I, I think that for a couple of things. First of all, I, I'm struck by how this is sort of highlighted once again, this divide between what goes on in Washington, what goes on on the West Coast. I think that that can't be overplayed. The fact that uh, th there has been this uneasy relationship between tech and Silicon Valley and Washington policy, and certainly the postmortem that's taking place inside the Fed that Michael Barr is running uh, is going to look at how the San Francisco Fed and other policymakers made missteps clearly and were unable to see the problems with this balance sheet. I've been struck just looking back on uh, what the chair of the FDIC said over the last year, warning about the sort of bond risks that uh, Silicon Valley Bank had to deal with. Um, you know, I think that somebody told me earlier this week that this is kind of a show me story for banks right now, that there's this impulse on the part of customers to know, they, they want to know that their banks are safe and the balance sheets are safe. And I think that uh, as a result of this, Banks have learned a lesson that they have to be more forthright about where they stand and they have to be more nimble about um, being in communication with their customers to show sort of how their portfolios stand and what their balance sheets look like. Well, and I also think it's uncovered, you know, maybe there's a lot of banking customers who don't necessarily understand the business model of banks, right? That they don't keep all of your money sitting in a vault somewhere, that they're actually using it to make their own money uh, out in the market or what have you in other investments. And, and, uh, and I wonder if you've if you've talked to folks who are have pulled deposits or considered pulling deposits and what that sounded like. I think that's absolutely true. I myself haven't talked to a lot of customers who are in that position, but I have colleagues who have. And you know, I think there was that immediate sense of worry because I think a lot of people just aren't even familiar with the basics of sort of what the FDIC customarily insures or doesn't. And there was this fear in the aftermath, obviously, that you know even if you didn't have 250,000 or more uh, in Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank or any of these other smaller regional banks, you were worried about there being any kind of backstop to that. So, yeah, I think that this is a, a moment when a lot of people are seeing the need to learn more about the way the banking system works and what's taken care of, what's insured and, and what's not. And, uh, you know, I think looking at the other side of that coin, I think that the government and regulators might see this as a lesson on their part to look more carefully at how that stuff is, is communicated, how people understand the way that banks work. Your point is a, a really good one, Julie, about sort of the fact that you think that you're locking up your money and you know maybe it's being lent out to other customers with the bank, but by and large, it's pretty safe. And and I think that, yeah, this, this added layer uh, of how this kind of surge of cash for these banks was deployed into these low interest securities is, is something that I think a lot of people are just sort of coming around to and trying to, to figure out and understand. And um, you know, I don't, I don't know how long lasting that will be, but I think it certainly was a wake up call for a lot of customers. And so now, even with the uninsured deposits that have been put forward from a range of banks, about 11 of them, I believe, uh, to the tune of $30 billion towards uh, First Republic in itself, and now thinking more broadly about what that could do in terms of turning into an, uh, a, a, you know, an injection of capital, an infusion of capital, I believe, as they put it, now the larger question is, what does this mean in terms of the options for some of the regional banks even to just navigate this interim crisis, as some have called it, even as uh, one of our guests has said he hesitates to call it a crisis earlier this week? Yeah, it's been interesting. Like The semantics of this have been really wild. We've debated internally, just to be candid, whether we call it that. You know, 
accepting the fact, acknowledging the fact that this is not like 2008, sort of, is crisis the right term here? You know, I think another thing we're kind of watching unfold here is uh, how slow these regulators tend to move and the government rap apparatus tends to move. So yeah, there, there is this fear among a number of these kind of mega regional banks, First Republic primarily, of what's gonna happen here. As you say, there's this discussion about a second deal following on that 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 $30 billion cash infusion, what that looks like. Um, you know, there, I, I think that there is, as there often is the case, companies wanna see the government match the urgency that they're feeling at this time. We're seeing that now. Um, I, I don't know how all of that that pans out, but it was astonishing to me twofold. Like after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank uh, and Signature Bank, you had First Republic essentially doing the right thing, lining up financing from JP Morgan and the Fed and acknowledging the fact that they could get more through this new facility. And yet investors didn't buy it when the markets opened on Monday. Uh, and you saw the same kind of thing play out after this deal was announced that was brokered by Jamie Dimon of, of JP Morgan, this $30 billion deal. You know, there was this immediate celebration that followed that statement from the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, and the FDIC welcoming what these banks had put together. And yet, the market reaction certainly wasn't as strong as I think both the banks that came together and those regulators thought it would be. So again, I go back to what I said just at the beginning, which is like sentiment is it's a real devil in all of this. And uh, it's a real lesson, again, as many people have learned before, but I think for a lot of people it's new, just how when there's a bank run, that contagion can spread and a bank run is really hard to, to slow down as it moves from bank to bank to bank. David, great to get your insight and perspective around all of what is continuing to play out even now. David Gurra, NPR Business Desk Correspondent, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Nice to see you.